the trauma experience, um, we know that it changes the structure of the brain and how people, how um, the child processes information. So where there might be a um, an event that normally would be not 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 cause a triggering effect, um, even such as like tapping somebody on the shoulder or um, certain words that we say, um, that can in a student a student who's experienced trauma, that you know. Um, kind of neutral stimulus now becomes something that creates this fear response in them that then they act out and fear with a fear response you might see um, it's, it's that fight flight or freeze where they might um, act out um, they might try and run away they might might become more aggressive either verbally or physically um, or they might just completely withdraw within themselves and, and um, um, have a tough time interacting with the, the, um, the classroom and everything else that's going on around them. Um, and what's so difficult is that those triggers, like I say, can be so, things that are typically not, the, things we wouldn't normally expect to make somebody upset, but it's because it brings back that traumatic experience. They, they go into um, a re-experiencing event of it and, and having to, um, they're trying to cope with it and trying to get through this scary situation for them. So. Yes, um, and when, when you're dealing with, um, or w one of the biggest things that can support students that have experienced trauma and is something that benefits all kids, and that's making the, the classroom more predictable, um, making sure that expectations are clear, um, make, establishing clear routines and procedures, um, and um, that helps prevent some of those triggering effects. But then it's also important for the adults in the classroom um, to know, notice when a kid is becoming triggered or, or having um, becoming more more distressed, and um, interacting with them in a way that's more supportive, more positive, as opposed to just punitive and, and punishing, because um, that those kind of interactions, those, those punishing and um, more negative interactions, can. Um, re-escalate the situation. Whereas if we, we approach them from a calm point of view um, and help uh, model how to act in a stressful situation, it can help that child to be able to um, um, come out of it in a calmer way. Most, most um, um, coping skills or the, these type of strategies um, deal with either um, some physical element, um, some like um, a, a texture, so you might have like a a calming bottle um, or a silly putty. Sometimes kids will do that. So different types of fidgets that they like to use that gives them an, a sensor input that um, kind of helps calm their body. Um, others are deal with breathing. One type of thing when we get get upset or have other strong emotions, um, our breathing starts to go faster and we start our, we start to have that fear response. And so doing breathing exercises can help. Um, calm you down, take more back control of your, your breathing, um, take back control of your body um, so that you can get calmed down. Some of the strategies are things like square breathing where you draw on your hand um, and when you go across you breathe out or breathe in and when you go down you breathe out so it looks like And you can teach a kid, some kids like that because of the sensory aspect. If it, they don't need the sensory, they can think about um, a rectangle or a square on the wall and they can use that as an example. Um, you can do different shapes with kids. Um, but it gives that concrete example, something for them to um, remember when they're upset to be able to do.